Hello, 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 everyone. I, we talk about uh, leukemia today. <laughs> All right, so leukemia is a cancer of uh, white blood cells. Leukemia, leukemia cells. So now, it is a malignant disease, uh, leukemia, that is uh, characterized by hyperplasia. That is true. Hyperplasia means rapid multiplication of white blood cells and their precursors. So leukemia is simply a cancer or malignant uh, cancer of white blood cells in which there is hyperplasia or rapid multiplication of white blood cells and their precursors. So in other ways, leukemia can be defined as a form of cancer in which the body produces too many abnormal white blood cells and their precursors. Okay, so now let's look at the predepositions, predepositions uh, to this uh, disease. Okay, predepositions. So the predisposing factors to leukemia. So no one knows necessarily the cause, but we have predisposition. Researchers have shown uh, a strong suspicion about four possible causes of leukemia. So radiation is one of them, uh, chemicals, uh, benzene, like benzene, chemicals like benzene, and viruses, uh, genetic factors, and chemotherapy. Those are some of the predisposing factors to the disease. So radiation is also one of the predisposing factors. The term radiation actually necessarily refers to various forms of energy such as X-rays and ultraviolet light that is found in sunlight. So radiation can um, uh, tear chemicals apart, thus damaging or destroying cells. So some researchers believe that uh, exposure to radiation can uh, cause some forms of uh, uh, leukemia. Chemicals, so some types of uh, chemicals are known to be carcinogenic. So a carcinogen is anything that can cause cancer. So chemicals can cause cancer by damaging cells and the substance within them. Examples include benzene poisoning and prolonged exposure to formaldehyde. 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 Viruses, uh, some researchers believe that some types of uh, leukemia are viral infection. The link between viruses and leukemia is strong in some cases, but it has not been proved. For example, human T cell leukemia virus uh, one, that is HTLV1, infection with this virus is linked to human T cell leukemia. So when we talk of chemotherapy, uh, particularly certain um, alkylating agents and toposomitis inhibitors that are used to treat certain types of cancers are likely, or they are linked to development of leukemia later. It is likely that radiation treatment adds to the risk of leukemia associated with certain chemotherapy drugs. So on genetics as a predisposing factor, leukemia tends to occur in some families more commonly than me in others. And this suggests that at least some forms of leukemia may be hereditary. Okay, so description of uh, giving a description of uh, the disease. We're saying blood contains three types of cells. We have red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So each type of cell has a special function in the body. Red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. Whilst white blood cells fight invading organisms such as bacteria and viruses. For platelets, they are involved in the process of blood protein. Here have a diagrammatic uh, expression from Adams here about uh, types of blood cells. So we have monocytes there, uh, neutrophils, 
ISNO fields and PASO fields that came. So there on top there. And then now we have platelets, macrophages, and erythrocytes. So that's just a diagrammatic presentation of types of blood cells. Now let's delve into the pathophysiology of leukemia. So what we can say is that blood contains three types of cells, that is red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So each type of cell has a special function in the body. Red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. White blood cells fight invading organisms such as bacteria and viruses. Platelets are involved in the process of all blood clotting. So hence, all blood cells form in the soft tissue that fuse the center of the bones. So this tissue is called the bone marrow. So all three types of blood cells arise out of a primitive type of cell known as stem cell. A stem cell can develop into a red blood cell, a white blood cell, or platelet, depending on the condition. So here have a diagrammatic or schematic presentation of the same. So we have a stem cell that may develop into myeloid stem cells or lymphoid stem cells. This will build us to understand the types of whom uh, leukemia and that's why I picked up uh, this part from the stem cell uh, production. So myeloid uh, stem cell will develop into myeloblasts or myelo, myeloid blasts. So myeloblasts there then uh, they will develop in red blood cells there then we are going to have uh, platelets and then we are going to have white blood cells. And then when you talk of lymphocytes, they will develop into lymphocyte stem cell from that stem cell. So we have lymphocyte stem cell, then lymphoblast or lymphoid blast, okay, that are now going to develop into lymphoid cells. Okay, so let's move on. Leukemia has two effects on the body. First, the white blood cell may not mature properly as they develop, they may lack the ability to kill fallen bodies in the bloodstream. So this defect seriously damages the immune system and the body loses the ability to fight off infections. Secondly, so many white blood cells may form that they pack the bone marrow until there's not enough room for red blood cells and platelets to develop. Hence, this was going to create some pressure symptoms within the bone marrow or within the bone. So without the red blood cells, the body cells, uh, the, body, the body cells do not get enough oxygen and the condition known as anemia is going to develop since they are all packed within the bone. Anemia will be characterized by general weakness, headache, pale skin, and dizziness. It can become a life-threatening disorder. Without platelets, blood cannot clot properly, and simple injuries can lead to severe blood loss. So there are three types of uh, white blood cells. Each has a special role to play into the immune system. So there are granulocytes, lymphocytes, and monocytes. Leukemia may result in the overproduction of any of the white blood cells. So whether it is acute or chronic, of which we are saying leukemia can be acute or chronic. So whether it affects granulocytes, lymphocytes, or monocytes, as leukemic cells grow and eventually outnumber normal cells, the following events will then occur. So the normal blood cells are disabled, resulting in conditions such as frequent infections, breathing problems, poor healing of small cuts or sores, and anemia. Okay? So anemia because of low red blood cell count. Leukemia cells may collect in certain parts of the body, causing pain. 
swelling and other problems that are due to hypoxia. So each type of leukemia is named for two characteristics. Whether it is acute or chronic, whether it affects granulocytes, lymphocytes or monocytes. So the first step in the process of stem cell maturation is the differentiation into two groups, the myeloid stem cell line and the lymphoid stem cell line. So leukemia that affects the myeloid lineage are called myelocytic leukemias, meaning myelodinous genius, genius, where it is coming from. So myelodinous or myeloblastic or non-lymphocytic. So from that schematic diagram that we gave here previously, we're saying we have myeloid, you have lymphoblast there. So from the, on the myeloid part there, so we're saying leukemia, that is going to affect the myeloid lineage. They were going to call it myelocytic leukemia. And then the leukemias that are going to affect the lymphoid lineage are called lymphocytic leukemia. Okay, you can call them, remember, lymphoblast, okay, stem cells, so you can call them lymphoblastic or lymphogenous uh, leukemias. All right, so those are the two categories of leukemia and how they come about, depending on the lineage of uh, cells that have been affected. So it can either be myeloid or lymphoid, lymphoblast, myeloblast, so that is how it is. So, each of the two major types of leukemia, myelogenous and lymphocytic, include both acute or chronic. So, whether it's myelogenous, it can either be acute or chronic. If it's lymphocytic, it can be either acute or chronic. So, acute essentially refers to a disorder of rapid onset. In the acute myelocytic leukemia, the abnormal cells grow rapidly and do not mature. Most of these immature cells tend to die rapidly also. Okay? So in the acute lymphocytic, lymphocytic leukemia, growth is not as rapid as that of myelocytic cells. Rather, the cells tend to accumulate. Common to both types of leukemia, is their inability to carry out the function of healthy white blood cells. So common in all these is the inability of white blood cells to carry their function. If untreated, death occurs within weeks or few months. So in the chronic leukemias, the onset tends to be slow and the cells generally mature abnormally and often accumulate in various organs often over long intervals. Their ability to fight infections and assist in repairing injured tissue is impaired. However, unlike the acute forms of leukemia, untreated, these disorders may persist for many months or as in the chronic lymphocytic uh, group, they may continue for many years. A distinctive feature of the chronic myelocytic type, it is invariable, it's, it's invariable conversion. If untreated to a more rapidly fulminating acute type, it may lead to rapid death. Okay, so now let's look at the summary of classification of leukemia. So we can have acute myeloid leukemia that is under myeloid, or we can have chronic myeloid leukemia. We can have acute lymphocytic leukemia or acute or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So when they're talking about uh, types of leukemia, we necessarily have two, myeloid leukemia and lymphocytic, which can either be acute or chronic. So, all of them can either be acute, acute myelocytic leukemia, acute lymphocytic leukemia, or all of them can now be chronic. 
chronic myeloid leukemia or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. All right, so signs and symptoms. Weakness or chronic fatigue may be noticed due to anemia, fever of a known origin due to increased metabolic rate and infections, unexplained weight loss may be due to increased metabolic rate with inadequate intake, frequent bacterial or viral infection due to lowered immunity may be also something that you can notice, headaches are due to cerebral hypoxia, Night sweat due to fever can also be noticed. Bone pain with no known cause may be due to ischemia. Easy bruising due to low platelet level is also noticed or it's one of the signs and symptoms. Of course, the patient may also have bleeding gums problem. So bleeding from gums and nose may be noticed due to low platelet counts. So blood in urine or stools is also noticed at some point or can be noticed at some point and it's due to renal involvement. In large lymph nodes, okay, or spleen, is also one of those signs and symptoms that can be observed. Fullness in the stomach due to large spleen can also be observed as one of the signs and symptoms. Then, Let's now diagnose this condition. You can do a full blood count or complete blood count, okay? It will show white blood cell count, which is high, but low platelet count and low hemoglobin levels, HB. Bone marrow biopsy will confirm the diagnosis as a lot of immature white blood cells are packed within the bone marrow. Lamba puncture can be done to rule out other conditions. Chest X-ray to rule out pulmonary infection can also be done. History of cancer in the family is also important as most cancers tend to run in families. Let's treat this condition then. So some of the dr cytotoxic drugs that can be used in treating this condition include vincristine, two milligrams IV once daily, and cyclophosphamide, 800 to 1,000 milligrams per kg body weight can be given also once daily. Supportive treatments like steroids are also added in the treatment for this patient. So prednisolone can begin with high dose, then reduce slowly. Okay? So slowly, for instance, you can start from 60 milligrams once daily, then reduce to 15 milligrams, then uh, 10 milligrams, then 5 milligrams until you stop. This is to avoid the after effects of steroids or affecting um, production within the corticosteroids there. So you have to, it should be gradual weaning. Radiotherapy can be used in treatment of uh, leukemia because uh, it uh, targets the over multiplying uh, cells. Palliative treatment, because treatment, like you said, it can be chronic or long time treatments, uh, palliative care may be advised. Antibiotics to prevent infections like penicillin can also be given since a patient has, in, has an increased number of white blood cells that are incapable of fighting infection, so some antibiotic cover can be given. Hemopoietics to correct anemia like folic acid, 5 to 10 milligrams once a day for 14 days, uh, can be given for 14, uh, for 14 days, can be given. Blood transfusion, when uh, the hemoglobin levels are very low, it can also be given, or oh, that is in severe anemia. Let's now look at the nursing care of uh, this condition. Our aim of nursing care is to relieve pain. A patient may be in a lot of pain because of the pressure 
of a, of a production of cells that is happening within the bone there. Okay, so they may have, they may be in a lot of pain. So other aim to consider or aims to consider is to prevent complications as we are caring for these patients. To promote comfort and to offer information, education and communication to the patient and the mother about the condition. For cancers, mostly it spells death to a lot of people. So it's important that you relieve anxiety by giving proper psychological care to the patient and the mother. The environment. What are some of the things that you can do to the environment for this patient? So the patient will be nesting in a general ward, however, reverse barrier nesting will be used to prevent nosocomial infection as patient is prone to infection. They have low immunity. So patient will be nest at the acute bay for close observation. They may have developed need for oxygen because there is reduced oxygen carrying capacity owing to the anemia that the patient may face. The room should be warm because the patient has called to preventing crisis. The room should be well ventilated to promote air circulation and prevent respiratory tract infection. Oxygen apparatus will be made available for use when the time of this near comes. The room will be well lit for easy observation. Let's talk about pain relief in this condition. Other prescribed analgesics uh, to pain relief are saying we have to offer prescribed analgesic for pain relief and comfort. So in this condition, we may offer some opioids, but you need to be aware that um, uh, they are addictive drugs, so it's only when pain is very severe. That's when you can give. So other painkillers can be consistent. This will be given, okay, like nanosteroid and inflammatory drugs, avoid giving injectables, patient, um, patient uh, can likely bleed, okay? So you have to do some home complex on the painful areas. It helps relieve pain and helps to promote blood circulation. We should also provide a bed cradle that is uh, to help relieve the weight of linen and prevent uh, the pain that is exerted by the weight of linen on the bones. Position. The patient is or will be propped up to relieve dyspnea. As the condition improves, the patient will allow to adopt any position that they are comfortable with. On psychological care, I will say that you have to explain the disease process in order to raise the knowledge levels and thereby allay anxiety. You have to encourage the patient to ask questions and answer them accordingly, accordingly and refer those that you cannot answer to the physician so that uh, the patient's uh, knowledge levels can be increased. You also have to explain all procedures that you're doing to the patient in order to array anxiety. As you are doing this procedure, patients need to understand what you're doing so that they do not become anxious. So you should also involve a success managed case in this, uh, in this uh, condition to help come and talk to the patient, to allow this patient to ask pressing questions and get answers. And then this helps improve patient's outlook on his condition that uh, yes, there's hope at the end of the tunnel, we can recover. You have, may also need to explain to him or her that uh, as the healthcare team, you are doing everything possible to ensure that he gets better in order to promote uh, cooperation. 
It should also involve success. Okay, so this one I've mentioned, and uh, you do vital signs under observations, temperature pulse, respiration, ruling out infections, observe for cyanosis, and cyanosis if improving or getting worse, and give oxygen therapy whenever necessary. Okay, you should also observe the dyspnea if uh, present, as it will prop up the patient to promote lung expansion and thereby the leaf tissue. You should also observe the patient's facial expression to detect pain and administer prescribed analgesic like uh, Panadol. You can have a pinometer for patient to take, but may not be necessary. So the patient is able to communicate when pain is too much, then I use the pinometer. All right, so I will, oh, you have to observe the patient's feeding pattern and take measures like giving small frequent meals to promote appetite. You can observe the respiration to detect dyspnea and report accordingly. You can observe pressure area to detect on, uh, on uh, pressure source uh, development. If it is there, then uh, uh, we can detect the pressure signs of pressure source so that the patient does not develop a pressure source. You should also observe the IV fluid to prevent a fluid overload if a patient is on any IV fluids and also observe the feeding pattern of the patient and take measures like small frequent meals, okay, of course, this we have tried to stress it, stress it in an area. So if on blood transfusion, also we have to observe the blood transfusion and detect transfusion reaction. Elimination. You should provide a lot of fluids and roughage to prevent a constipation because anemic patients, they are poor peristalsis. So patients may tend to be anemic. You should also prove, um, so you should also prove copious fluids in order to promote renal wash out and there by prevent renal problems. Offer a bed pan if this if patient is confined to bed and this will ensure proper bowel movement. Rest and activity, the patient will be on bed rest. In the acute phase, that is in order to reduce the demand for oxygen. During a crisis, the patient will be on complete bed rests in order to promote a recovery and reduce on pain sensation. Okay, so patients may in sometimes be in a crisis of pain because of the, the accumulation of pulling of these abnormal cells uh, in other parts of the body. So you have to plan the nursing care in such a way that the period of rest are allowed in order to conserve patients' energy so i'm sure you also be doing procedures in parts so that you do not um, disturb patients so the environment also needs to be quiet to promote uh, rest for the patient so you can nest the patient in a quiet room okay so you can administer prescribed analgesia you can ensure uh, squeaking trolleys are out to prevent noise and thereby promote death promoting waste, you can also answer all phone calls promptly to prevent disturbing the patient or put your phone on silent, as simple as that. You can put your phone on silent just for vibration so that the, the tone of a phone does not disturb the patient. You can also play the radio at low volume to promote waste and the radio, remember, is good for diversion therapy. For the nutrition, you can provide any giving foods like in Shima, provide the energy needed for, so that it provides the energy needed for metabolic process. Proteins are given like fish, uh, beans, and the likes. These are protein containing foods. They help, they help promote the replacement of worn out tissues. Vegetables and fruits will be able to provide the raise immunity and promote skin and mucous membrane. You should also provide a lot of water fluids uh, to prevent dehydration due to excessive sweating or promote uh, uh, bring up of wool flame. So you also save small frequent meals um, to promote appetite. Uh, it's 
big meals may make patients lose appetite. You can provide iron-rich foods such as liver, meat, green leafy vegetables. This is to promote uh, red blood cell formation. You can allow visitors to bring food prepared by the patient in order to promote appetite and do regular mouth washes in order to promote appetite. On hygiene, I can say encourage the patient to take uh, plant baths to, in order to remove dead diphtherium and promote comfort. You can do hair care to promote self-esteem and also prevent pediculosis. Do nail care to prevent auto infection and bruising, self, which can lead to bleeding. You can do mouth care with a soft brush to prevent halitosis and causing breathing because patient has breathing tendencies or may have gum breathing tendencies. That's why we are using a soft brush also. Any sewed linen and clothes should be changed to promote comfort and prevent uh, infection. On medication, you can administer prescribed analgesia like pethidine or morphine at the right time to promote rest and give prescribed antibiotics like uh, benzyl penicillin to promote quick recovery and uh, prevent a secondary infection. You can ensure that uh, you offer the patient folic acid and uh, this is to promote blood formation uh, or to increasing, uh, for increasing uh, um, hemoglobin levels. You can also ensure that the drugs are swallowed in your presence uh, in order to promote the recovery some patients are lazy in taking drugs. Ensure that uh, you sign for the drug to prevent overdosing the patient and the lights. Nursing is a continuous process, of course, but um, in that continuum of process, uh, proper documentation should be done. You can give the drug at the right time and frequency to ensure required plasma levels are maintained, thereby promoting recovery. Administer prescribed some toxic drugs like the Christians, cyclophosphamide, so that the patient can recover. On health education, you can educate the patient about this condition in order to create awareness and prevent reoccurrence of the condition. Explain the need for taking the medication in order to promote compliance and recovery. Educate the patient about predisposing factors in order to prevent cancer. And we have already mentioned those predisposing factors here, so you can also mention those. You can uh, talk to the patient about the need to take a balanced diet using local available foods in order to boost the immunity and blood formation. Okay? So in health education, uh, the last items I'll mention is to educate the patient about uh, the need to keep, uh, to to be coming for review so that the progress in treatment and recovery is monitored. You can also advise the patient to ensure that he is the worm at least twice a year. Those uh, worms may affect the nutrition status of the patient. So in our series of looking at pediatrics, we are looking at infectious diseases and non-infectious diseases. So leukemia is not an infectious disease, okay? It's a disease that you, you passed on because someone is predisposed to the code, to the predispositions that we mentioned in this condition. So in the other lesson, we mentioned actually the infectious diseases that we are covering, um, that we are covering in pediatrics and the non-infectious disease that we are covering. So today we have covered one non-infectious condition, which is leukemia. Please, I would want you to subscribe to the below link that is here and click the bell icon so that you are notified each and every time we post a new content. Please, if you are facing any problems through our Google Class, we are there to help you throughout your curriculum so that education can be found. So subscribe, click the bell icon so that um, we can be part of your journey towards achieving 
your academic excellence. So thank you. Bye.